What's up guys, welcome back to another edition of Two Picks. It's been a couple weeks, I know, but guess what? We're gonna keep the videos rolling and we're gonna be doing a bone-in turkey breast. And you're like, hey man, why are you doing turkey? It's not even Thanksgiving yet, but guess what? Let's get a jump start on it because when the holidays come around about two and a half months, three months, you'll be ready. And in case you don't wanna do a whole turkey, pay attention to this recipe that I have. This is the way I do it. There's different ways to do it, but you're gonna enjoy this video and it's gonna come out good. Stay tuned. guys so here we are we got the turkey breast sitting in a cast iron skillet and the only reason I'm cooking in a cast iron skillet is really just to catch some of these juices have some you know for it to cook in when I take it out and then I can base also with the juices that's on it but we're going to get to that once we put this on a smoker and I for the sake of this turkey breast I did let me use one hand right here and show you I did let me get the little racket sitting on lead a little back on because you know what we like to eat on it. All the little skin right there, it's gonna turn out good. So I'm gonna show you what I basically did before I even got it to this process. Right here, this turkey breast, I put it in my briner bucket. You can use anything to brine it on. You have to use a briner bucket, but I have one. Use it in a briner bucket, put about a half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of kosher salt, some bay leaf, some uh, black peppercorn, and I use some of that good old Louisiana crab boil of course that's the that's a key ingredient you put that in there and a little bit of um this meat a uh, meat church seasoning and a little more to sla uh, slap your mama also in that brine heated it up cooled it off with some ice put the turkey breast in there with about maybe a gallon and a half two gallons of water give or take just a less enough that it you know it covered it Put it in the refrigerator overnight, 24 hours. Don't have to do 24 hours. Now, I did 24 hours, and that just allowed it to get the maximum flavor in there. Now, once that came out after 24 hours, I put it on this little rack that I have inside a pan, and I put it back in the refrigerator after I patted it dry in order for the top of the skin to dry out and get rid of all that moisture because we want a little bit of the crispy skin. We don't want no rubbery skin, okay? We want a little bit, a little bit of crispy skin. But that's what I did, and after a full another night in the refrigerator, now minimum, you can do about eight hours if you want. You can do, you know, 10, 12 if you want, but I did a full day, because I worked during the middle of the week, and I wouldn't go over 24 hours, okay? Uh, especially for this size. But that's what I did. So now we're at this process right here. And I got it out and I've been letting it sit out for maybe 15 minutes. And we already got the smoker rolling. We got it rolling in direct heat. And I'm gonna do it on my Weber um, Charcoal Summit today. A um, little bit of cherry wood, a little bit of oak. And we're gonna roll that joker around 250. So let's get to it. And we ain't gotta do much because I got a lot of flavor already in this bird from the brine. But what I'm gonna do right here before we do anything is go ahead and season it inside. So I'm gonna take this other hand and I'm gonna take this chupacabra right here two by two gringos. It's the poultry season now. If y'all haven't got a hand on this one, I like to try all kind of rubs, but this is one of my favorites. And I'm going to keep this little rack in there. You don't have to have a rack in there, but I got a little rack to um, keep it off. If you got a foil pan, that'll be just fine. See, season this cavity, all right? Get your season in. I like season. I don't know why everybody else. I like season right there. And we're going to hit a little bit of this Holy Voodoo by Meat Church, okay? Hit that in there. And for so it can help cook evenly, I'm going to place a little um, sweet onion, a little Vidalia onion, in the cavity right here, okay? Put it back in there, just like that. Just like that, okay? Now, I'm gonna take off one glove so I can use for seasoning, all right? So I can keep my hands clean. And the reason you say, hey, Bruce, you got that crab boil out. Now, I made an injection. And what I did, I used about six tablespoons of butter, two cups of water, about a fourth a cup of the crab, liquid crab boil, and a little bit of Cajun seasoning with the holy voodoo right there. Brought it to, a, um, heated it up, maybe a semi-boil, and then I've been letting it cool off a little bit, but not too much because you don't want that butter to solidify. 
So we're gonna just take our injection right here and let me see if I can get a good plunge out of this because sometimes these things get stuck. Oh, there we go. And if you got problems with that, put a little oil on your gasket, which is what I did, but it got a little stuck again. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of injection, just like that, all right? And I wish I had my old inject injector with the little um, tube on it, but I don't have it anymore. And you just wanna go around here under the skin, and this is optional, okay? It's already got flavor in there. And as you're going, kind of draw it out, but pump it in there. And you notice how I'm keeping this under the skin, okay? Because I don't want to puncture that skin. Get it all in there, okay? Take a little more. And I might have a little some seasoning in there there you go that's smooth enough now if you want to now i need to get around to some of these other parts go under here turn it over a little bit and i want to get in the other part of the breast and if instead of taking it out just move the needle just like that okay so you see how it just puffs up go right here get in the, the size right here get all that seasoning in there Get this little rack out of here for right now, okay? Give me a little more injection. And do the same for the other side of the breast. We're going for maximum flavor, guys. And we're gonna get a little bit of this back just like that. That's all we want in there. Now, if you want to, let me get this back on the rack, okay, guys? Get this right. If you want to, and I'm going to wipe that up. This case is dripping a little bit. Try not to touch all that. There we go. Get it settled back up. What else? I said if you want to, right? If you want to, you can cut that back out if you want. But you know what? I'm not wasting anything, so I'm going to keep it on there. Now, Skin is dry, has got wet, and if it has, uh, take a paper towel and dry it off, but since it's been in the fridge all day, it don't matter. So take your seasoning now, take a little bit of this holy voodoo, and we're going to get the outside. Okay, not too much because it's been sitting in that brine most of the night. Okay, now I put this rack in here, stupid, take it back out. <laughs> Go ahead and get the seasoning all over that. All right. Now this is similar to how I do a, a deep fried turkey. And yes, I do brine my deep fried turkeys. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you don't have to brine it, but I do. I brine it. <laughs> I want maximum juice. And you get a lot of juice out of frying them, but sometimes people, I sell turkeys during the holidays and I typically, uh, I'll brine those also. And I'll season it the same way I will fry it. And I'll sell the Cajun turkeys. Okay. So let me get this season on the side right here. And then we'll hit it on the top. Okay. All right. So I'm putting a little pan back in. The one that keeps slipping. I probably need a better pan for the feet, my future. But that's okay. We're going to use this for right now. There it go. Okay. Now... After that's set and done, go and hit the top. Get all that seasoning on the top so it can look pretty. Get a nice even coat. Okay. And that should be good, guys. That's enough. If I miss any, just, you know, get there. But that should be good enough. Now, I got a little bit of juice left over, right? I hope I'm standing in camera so y'all can see. The rest of this juice, we're gonna put most of it in the pan. It should make its own juices from the drippings, but I'm gonna pour about half of that. You know, I should be left over almost a cup, three quarters of a cup. And it's gonna evaporate some, but I'm gonna use that for later on when I base, okay? And it's still sitting out of the rack, and that should be good right there. So let's go ahead and get this right here set up in the smoker. I got it rolling and we'll get this joker cooking. All right, guys, so we're out here at the smoker now. Let's get this bird on. 
I got this hanging out at about 250, 255. We're gonna keep it there. If you wanna cook it at 300, it cook faster, but you just gotta watch the skin, make sure it's not burning too much. And let's go ahead and get this open, get some wood in it. All right, so it's been heating up for a while. And what I'm going to, before I do anything, I'm going ahead and get my pieces of wood in, get my little gloves on. All right. So, I got a couple pieces of cherry right there. And I got a couple pieces of this small post oak. All right. And my smoker's not that big, so I don't need large pieces of wood. Just throw that in there. Throw, throw your other pieces of wood in there. It'll get smoking. And I'll leave a couple chunks out. And get my vents closed on the side. And I don't need a drip pan today. Okay. No drip pan needed. Because I'm putting it on the cast iron. All right. So let's go ahead and get the bird on. Get that set right there in the middle. Now I'm not worried about my temperature right now. Taking it right now, it's got to it's got to cook, and we're looking about a maybe three four hour cook maybe, but sometimes things cook faster than that. But so we're gonna let this joker cook and hang out in the smoker, and we'll go come check it in about maybe an hour, and see how it's looking. All right, guys, so here we go. It's been about an hour and a half, almost two hours. I came out here and checked it after an hour, and I didn't like that the rub wasn't quite set like I usually like it. Um, so basically, I left it in there for another 30, 45 minutes, and I think this rub and the skin is set up. It's real, that's crispy. That's going to be real crispy, and at these lower than usual tips you cook, any kind of poultry at usually you're cooking like 275 to 325 some people cook it higher than that to get crispy skin but by me letting that um turkey sit in the fridge it's basically um did the job for me at a lower temp so i'm going to take this my thermo pen right here and i'm going to go behind here and i'm going to go in the deep the thickest part of the breast and what you want to do is put it in there and kind of bring it up a little bit about 140, 141, okay? And that's what we're kind of getting there. Now I'm gonna take my little brush I got, and I think we're gonna start giving it a little butter all over here, a little basting action going on. Now, if you didn't wanna do it with the butter mixture that we made to inject it, um, you could do some duck fat spray or some canola oil spray, olive oil spray. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can do a glaze if you want um, in the end, which most likely I probably will do. I have some um, rib glaze. Um, can't remember what, what flavor was it, but, you know, just uh, basically going as I want. And sometimes when you're barbecuing, you kind of come up with different ideas after you're cooking. Like, oh, man, that would be great. So that's what I'm basically going to do. You know, this is dinner time. Um just decided you know what let's eat this for dinner put it all on the back also get get it all on the back of that because you know you got some skin on the back and i like this little brush because it's like little flames but it takes a lot of that base mixture and it gets it right up in there all right so i'm going to close this and i think in about 30 minutes i'll come back and check um getting the color i want that looks very nice and we'll come back and check in, like I said, 30 minutes and see what the temp said. All right, so we're back outside and we're hanging around about 250, almost 252. Um, you know, as you're cooking, you got to adjust your vents a little bit sometimes. I don't have my little fan on today, but it's been working out. I love this little Weber Summit charcoal. I've been using it for years. So today, I think I'm going to hit it with some of this rib candy by texas pepper jelly i picked this up at the meat church barbecue supply here in wasahatchee texas and this is his peachy peach habanero now usually i use this for ribs but i think it's going to go great on this turkey breast so let's go ahead and give it an open see what it looks like wow right there look at that look at that color right there so what we're going to do i'm going to check the temperature again okay 
And I hope you can see this in the video. 149, deepest part. Should be coming up in a minute. I think this is 149, 48. I think this is good enough that I can throw this little glaze on and keep monitoring it till it comes up to about 160, then we'll take it off. So I'm just gonna put this over here just a little bit as it goes around. That way it covers the whole thing. Get some on the back, on that back skin. Get some on the front right here, on the top. And this should really help this glaze. I mean, the set, you know, get a little shiny, give a little more flavor, a little kick on the top. This stuff is not too hot. I think I'm gonna use the rest of that. As you see, it's already used bottle. And we'll set that just like that. That's pretty. Look at the shine already. And we're going to close it up. And we'll keep monitoring it. should come up in maybe another 25, 30 minutes. And like I said, about four hour cook. And we should be done. so we got our turkey breast off the smoker look at that glaze look at the shine on it we let it set out here once it reached 160 for about 15 minutes and you know when you're doing that some of that heat and that temperature will come up just a little bit that way it can be perfect 165 and that's what you should um, eat it at minimal that way you won't be getting sick so we're gonna move this over here okay and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this breast out Get it off the rack. We got our, got our onion right there. And I'm gonna put it right here on the cutting board. And we're gonna go ahead and cut into this bad boy. So let's just go ahead and see how juicy this is from the brine. Look how it cuts through that skin. Oh man, look at that. That looks good right there. All that juice coming out there from that brine, that injection, the Cajun injection. I'm gonna cut that off right here. Look at the skin. That looks so good. Just cut me a little piece. Cut right through that skin. That's perfect. Not, it's not rubbery, not falling apart. Go ahead and taste it. Mm -hmm. mm. All that flavor from that 24 hour brine. Look at the bite through on the skin. Usually if your skin is rubbery, it'll pull it right off like some rubber. That's bite through like this competition on some chicken thighs on a turkey breast. I mean, I don't like squeezing stuff, but look at that juice all in there. I mean, that's tender. And guys, we're gonna go ahead and eat dinner. This almost tastes like a fried turkey. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. You know, and just if you're looking for something to do on your next holiday in a couple months, and you don't want to cook the whole turkey, do it like this, the toothpaste way. Till next time.